All right, going on hour 13 today. Just really want to get this done, but it is a lot. So I just want to go over real quick how I got this subframe back up in there. It's uh, pretty tough to do in your home garage by yourself, but basically jack up the engine where that dog bone mount is and then kind of the reverse of what I did before I, like, I jockey the jack under the subframe and then started to slowly bring it up right on that point but you know I had to go around and block each corner you can see my various items uh, all I also you know block these to hold them out so that the arms didn't crash into the the rotors or the struts same thing here but you know it was slow going I had to block up little by little each corner as I went because if you try to just go send one side or one end, um, it'll bind on you. <clears throat> I tried to lift this up and get a bolt nut started, and as soon as I did that and it was still slanted this way, it just it bound up on the other studs. So it has to come up pretty flat. So just take your time little by little. If you got a jack under that under that mount back there that's pretty centered that's where all the weight is um, you're able to lift the front yourself and just put items under it but four corners slow um, and the only tricky part well it's all tricky but you know, coming up through there, I almost punctured that boot. You know, I had to finagle with the boot to get that, once I got up close to that hole, to get the, um, the spline shaft through there. But she's good now. So... And then you gotta come in here. Can't attach that O2 sensor. Um, Sorry. You gotta leave this unplugged. You gotta get this hose out of the way. Um, it's tight, but like I showed you before. The um, power steering connection down there. Get the copper washers on both sides of that and tighten that up good. So now that that's buttoned up, I should be able to put the wiper assembly in that whole tray back in there and button up the, the air intake and be done with the motor. And then I still got to put in the CV axles and torque all these uh, subframe bolts and then put all the plastics back in the wheel wells. That'll be tomorrow's task. Alright, I think we're officially back together. Uh, didn't really take a lot of footage because everything's kind of the reverse of taking it apart. You get the point. Um, I'm going to take a risk and just put it all back together, complete, and assume that I did a good job, fire it up, and and cry if it doesn't work. Uh, the only thing that I haven't put it back on is the pipe. I can do that last. I forgot to buy gaskets for the ends, so i got to clean those up, but i got to go run to the store real quick, get gaskets. Um, every, everything's torqued down. Subframe's all torqued up. Uh, got all the plastic back on. That actually took longer than I 
than I would have liked. So many clips and a lot of them are broken so I had to replace them. But everything's all torqued up. Um, I'm going to put some cheaper oil in it and run it for a while if it runs and try to purge out any coolant that was left in there you know get it mixed up real good and then drain the oil and put a fresh batch of better oil in and a new filter um, and then I I did purge most of the coolant out of there I even I blew out the heater core and everything when I was when I had it apart so it's gonna take a bunch of coolant to to bleed the system out and fill it with coolant and then I gotta add I did get rid of most of the power steering fluid as well so um, I got a couple of quarts of that stuff and I'll have to bleed that system as well I'm sure there's a lot of air in there so uh, run to the store real quick get that oil and those gaskets and then we're gonna touch her off She's been running for about half an hour now. Been bleeding the coolant system. Um, really had to rev it up to get the, the heater core to fill up. But uh, yeah, she seems to be purring pretty nicely. Revved it up a bunch of times. Everything sounds good. Um, that sound when they first started it up, that grindy sound was the. the um, power steering pump had a lot of air in the system but uh, that seems to be bled out now and yeah the only thing is I couldn't couldn't score that gasket so I put the pipe on just to run it but you know it's a little loud so I gotta try to find that gasket with the flex pipe nobody seemed to have it I went to three different places which is a bummer because other than that I was done um, the only other thing I got to do is I'm going to do another transmission fluid change because I, I lost a lot of tranny fluid so I know it's low so I'm, I got a few extra quarts I'll just do another another change that should take about three four quarts I think I put a video up already on how to do that and it'd be nice to do that while I'm, while I'm up here on the lift on the, on the jack stands so other than that, I, I think I got it. It's good for another 130,000. All right, I just took her for a road test and everything seems great. It, uh, no clunks, nothing weird. Engine's running great. Everything's shifting fine. The only problem I've found so far is um, my steering wheel's off quite a, a little bit. So when I when I put that shaft back in the coupler with the steering column, I must not have uh, aligned it on the same spot. So I got to take that apart and move it over. Probably just one spline, but that's no big deal. So let's give her a little look around. Make sure everything's going good. Probably run down and get some gas too. She's purring.
took quite a bit to bleed that coolant. Kept having to top it off, but I think it's full now. Nothing pouring out the bottom. No check engine lights. That P0016 code cleared itself, I think. Well, looks like we've got a little exhaust leak further down. That's not going to pass inspection. Anyways, it never ends. So that's it. I think I got it. I'm going to take it to work tomorrow. <clears throat> Just wanted to go over uh, the, the whole video series as a whole. Um, there's other YouTube videos out there about this particular engine um, and doing, you know, the, the timing chain in it and the water pump. Um, and, you know, guys that have done a much better job than me at laying out step by step for, for that process. Um, what I really wanted to cover in this video was, was doing the job, uh, a, a big overview of doing the job in this particular car, the Mazda 6, because it's <clears throat> the fact that you have to drop the subframe and, and the engine and move it around to, to do it makes it a lot harder than those other cars like the the uh, the Edge or the CX-9 or, or the, the SUVs. Uh, it makes it miserable. So I want to do this video series to show you guys that yes, you can do it and you can do it in your garage. Uh, the question of whether or not you would want to, that's up to you to decide. Full disclosure, you know, I probably have about 40 hours into this job and about, I don't know, $700 in parts and fluids. Um, you know, I, obviously I did a full timing chain service and a few other little things while I was in there, uh, you know, maintenance and stuff. And fluids aren't cheap, you know, Mazda, all Mazda genuine stuff. So... You know, I probably got about 700 in that, and there was a few things I needed to buy, like uh, that nice jack and and some some specialty tools like um, the cam holders. So, you know, all said, I I was probably a thousand bucks into it by the time I was done, um, which still isn't bad considering, you know, I had quotes ranging from two thousand for just a water pump to, you know. 4500 which you know is it's is crazy but you can see why um so yeah and like i said i probably have about 40 hours you know it, if you you know now that i've done the done it in the garage and you've seen these videos maybe you're you're a hero and you can do it in 25 or 30 hours um but you know there's a lot to it and whether or not it's worth it is up to you um but yeah, like I said, you know, you, you really should get these tools, you know, uh, definitely, I needed this, you know, I, I think you could take the starter off and jam something in the flywheel or, or something like that. There's a, a different trick for holding the, the crankshaft, so maybe you don't need this, but you're definitely going to need jack stands, you know, a couple jacks, um, and then you definitely... You aren't going to do this job. This is probably the biggest deal killer for a lot of people is you, you got to have one of these. Um, you just, you're not going <clears> to, <throat> you're not going to lower that engine and, and move it over without, without the, the hoist or you shouldn't try. Uh, so that's it. Other than that, I, I'm going to go get an alignment because I had the subframe off and you know, that might have shifted things around a little bit and then this job will be done. So Thanks for watching, and if you try to tackle this, uh, good luck.